Hey, how are you? Hey, Lou, how are you? I'm okay. Dan, Dan Kushnick. <clears throat> how are you uh, settling into all this stuff? I'm liking it a lot. We're exploring a lot of interesting things. Good. And uh, I want to mention to you guys uh, b before the meeting, um, um, the board is going to start. Well, I'll wait, I'll wait till everybody shows up. I know I'm. Uh, hi. Hello, you. Hello, we're not, Chrissy, we're not related, are we? You know, it's funny you ask. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't <laughs> we could be. Yeah, young is such an young is such an uncommon name. I'm sure you. I think it was originally a German, Jung, Junger, or something like that. Oh well, you know, my I'm from Oklahoma, and I remember younger being younger as in ER, and I think there were some bank robbers that were younger brothers. Younger brothers, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's certainly not uncommon on this call. <laughs> but we all wish we were, we were younger. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Hi, everybody. Hi, hey, Ellen. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, Renee. Um, so I know Mandy is going to be a couple of minutes late. I don't see Liam. And um, Debbie needs the invite. And uh, Tim, Tim has given his best. He's like very sorry, but you know, Vivian's sleeping three or four hours at a time right now. So he's still yeah. hands on deck. Yikes. Yep. OK. Um, um, I wanted to mention something uh, before you guys begin. Um, uh, the um, uh, and it's it, not in my well. It's just something maybe you want. You might want to think about it. The board very soon will be looking at uh, um, municipal electric generation using solar arrays, and um, we would love your input if you if you care to do that to look at it. All right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Where where would you where would you cite the solar arrays? Um, well, I I don't know. That's one of the things we'd look at. But we do have a capped landfill that we can use uh, over at uh, Taylor Lane, and um, uh, the roofs of buildings and uh, you know that kind of thing. There's a there's a town in uh, uh, in Rockland County, uh, Clarkstown, that did exactly that, and they're uh, they're selling power to uh, Orange and Rockland. And uh, that that town supervisor is going to take his uh, entire municipal operation off the grid in 2025. Oof. Wow. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm guessing well, the idea, uh, I'm guessing that the idea of putting solar arrays at Taylor Lane might not win universal acclaim, but well, it's certainly well I, I don't want to get. I, we, we just yeah. want the uh, we just want the uh, uh, to uh, um, suggest. Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, uh, bringing it up, and if you guys have any thoughts on it, that's it. I I just pulled Terrell Lane out of out of my my uh, my mind there. That's not. All right, you know what, um, Lou, that is um, on our agenda for tonight, and Excellent. I just want, I just thank you, and I um. I'm, I'm I here to listen. Pull the meeting um to begin. Hi everyone. <laughs> um, I think everybody is on. Um, Debbie should be getting on. I just sent her the link. So motion to um, begin the meeting. So moved. Yes. Second. 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 OK, vote. Ellen, can, can I just, um, I guess we kind of have to wait for Debbie, though. I think she's doing the minutes tonight. She is doing the minutes. Um, okay. I mean, I just sent her the link. And okay. she should be, I don't know why she's not on. Here she comes. If she's she coming now. OK. All right, I think we have a full roster here tonight, which is great. Um, All right. Thank you. Hey, Debbie. Welcome back. Yes, thank you. I, it was so weird that the, the invitation just wasn't there just now. It was there earlier. I don't know, but thank We've you. all had those gremlins in our emails. So, hey, <laughs> just um, so the meeting has started officially. I believe you are a minutes taker. Yes. So I hope you have uh, Let's just call 7 to 5. And I just want to remind everyone that this will be our last meeting uh, on Zoom. So starting next month, we will be meeting in person um, back at the courthouse at 169 Mount Pleasant. Um, so that will be, um, you know, sort of back to the old. 
Any chance it's going back to 7.30? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, that's a good question, Mandy. I, I'm, I'm presuming yes, but I, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get certainty on that. Yeah, I think that's better when we meet in person. And I just, um, you know, I have to be frank, my, my son is in school and has now been, you know, two weeks without masks and has had three notices of close encounters. He's supposed to test every first day and fifth day. Like there's a lot of this going on. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm all about seeing in person. Do we have to do it in that tiny room with no windows or is, uh, <laughs> you know, if it's a nice spring day, is outdoor an option? I mean, what I'll say is it's it's not really a tiny room, the courthouse, but I, oh. I hear your point. Um, and when we get close. Oh, yeah, I was thinking of the other one. Yeah, let me get close. Let's just work out the logistics. I think we're all sort of of a like mind where we don't want to do anything that will put us at risk. You know, but we are following state guidelines when it comes to these meetings. Um, question on that. Um, are they going to, you know, retain a Zoom option or a dial in option for people who are out of town? Yeah. Um, you know, we've always had, even pre COVID, we've always had the ability for somebody to um, zoom in or come in by video. Like if we had like a guest speaker or whatever. I mean, you know, I, I'm hoping that will remain as an option because yeah, to your point, people may be away, maybe still want to participate. We may have guest speakers that can't be here in person that we want to invite. So I am hoping that that will still be a feature of it. I, you know, I don't have all the details ironed out. I think we are, I think today is the last day of Zoom meetings. Tomorrow it starts in person. Wow. So we'll okay. certainly know a lot more when we get closer to our, to our April meeting. Um, Leon, did you have your hand up? Uh, no. Okay. All right. So let's just keep going here. I don't want to dwell on this. Um, so as usual, let's just... Um, vote to approve the minutes from our February meeting. Hopefully everybody had a chance to read the minutes. Um, Renee has always did a fabulous job and captured all the main points. So um, I will make a motion to approve. Second. Okay. All approved. Aye. Vote aye. hands. Okay, aye. Wonderful. All right, Renee, you know the drill from here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm just gonna, um, I just wanna start out with just a couple of uh, really just announcements, um, want everyone to know. So the um, $5,000 grant money that we got for running the Grid Rewards campaign last year, um, the bulbs, the LED bulbs were purchased and the first batch of them were given away by the Larchmont Mamaroneck Hunger Task Force last week. Um, they were put in the food bags, there was, um, it was a four pack of bulbs with a bilingual flyer telling residents sort of, you know, the benefits of those bulbs, the energy saving benefits. And I wasn't there when they were given out, but I heard that it was, um, you know, people were very happy and it was a great reception. And that really um, at least makes me feel really great. And then whatever bulbs were left over, we're gonna be given in, you know, away in subsequent weeks. So that commitment has been met. I Great. was there and it was it was really stupendous. Um, oh, you were there? Yeah, I, I volunteer when I can. And, oh, I so um, wanted to go. I had a doctor's appointment. It, Tom was there early on and um, I think that it took a moment for them to um, get the flyer in and associated with it, but everyone knew what they were and, you know, like everything that they're appreciative for, they were appreciative for, for that addition. Great. That's lovely. I'm so glad you were there. It's nice that you do that. Ellen? So the, the bulbs were like $3,800, right? I believe that Jerry was talking about that. So there should be another $1,200 somewhere. Um, you know, I never saw the final tally. And if there is extra money left over, I'm going to talk about this later in the agenda. Um, but I, there is um, active discussions and activity around getting um, an electric mower. Okay. And so, that was okay. So we're going to get to that. Uh, Thank you. Yep. And, and um, by the way, this is the, I don't know if you can see very well, that's the pack and the flyer. Oh, nice. A four Send pack me that and picture. Flyer. What's that? Send me the picture. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Thank you. 
So um, a parent approached me through email and I think it's forgetting his name right now, but I could look it up. So he's leading a campaign with Dr. Shaps of the Marinette School District. He's the um, superintendent of the, the Marinette School District to try to get his attention on electric school buses. Now, Mamaroneck doesn't own a fleet of school buses. In fact, most kids don't qualify for busing, but there are buses that um, are used and we, um, I guess, farm it out to a third party operator, but he's leading a letter writing campaign. I did write a letter for me personally. Um, you know, there is a, a state guideline for school buses to be completely electrified by 2035. So he's trying to get this in Shap's head before the next district budget. So I wrote a letter to Dr. Shaps, the superintendent, and to the school board members. Um, if anybody's interested in writing a letter, I can send you the letter that I wrote. Um, I could send you the letter that he wrote if anybody wants to sort of jump on the bandwagon and try to lobby for, um, you know, it would basically be trying to get this operator, things with Royal buses to yeah, start, <laughs> you know, to start really, you know, transitioning their fleet to electric. I mean, it will take a number of years, but that, that, that effort should be getting started really this year. So, um, you know, I think that a, a letter writing campaign could be really productive here if anybody wants to do that. I have Can the email address. Out? Could, you, could you put a PDF for us on uh, Outlook? Um, I could do that and I'll give you the, um, the relevant email addresses. Okay. That'd be great. Thanks, Ellen. Um, who, who takes a bus here though? Just this maybe special education children? Special education children, kids that are going to, um, the kids that I think you have to live a certain distance. Two miles. So flies. Yeah. So kids in, kids in Harbor Heights take a bus. Yeah, there are certain yeah. distances um, okay. that are greater than the two miles. And then, you know, kids take the buses for sports after school. They take them, you know, to, yeah. to, to events. So yeah, okay. we're not a busing district, but I guess it's, there are buses. Oh, well, there's always, um, you know, well, it seems like four or five buses out the back of Homics every afternoon. Yeah. They get, so. Yeah. Yeah, there are kids that live two miles away, plus yeah. from Homics. So so, Alan, just to, to make it clear, what is the ask? Is it to get Shaps to ask Royal voluntarily to uh, start using electric buses or to transition? Or is it something we're asking him to insist as a matter of a contract or what? What is it that we're? Yeah, I think I think it's. Um, this particular parent feels that since budget season is upon us. And I guess we I don't know how what the contractual terms are with Royal, but it's to try to right get in front of Royal and say, you know, we want, you know, I, I don't really know how it works with us paying, if we would pay for the buses or if it changes what our arrangement is with them. But I think it's just to open up the conversation really. I mean, I think it's useful to, to figure out what we're asking for and making sure that what we're asking for is actually something that whoever the recipient is in a power to do. Um, yeah, no, I, mean, I, I think that the school board and superintendent are certainly, um, I think they could certainly make decisions regarding, uh, you know, maybe it's not a purchase decision, but they could certainly say to Royal, we want you to start transitioning a fleet to electric. Um, so, and, and, and it's a pressure campaign. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that we need all the gritty terms of the contract. I know you have your lawyer hat on right now. I don't know that we really no, no, need I'm, that. No, I'm, no, I'm trying to be practical. Let's figure out what the right request is. Okay, yeah. I mean, as I said, I could send you the letter that, that this guy sent. I sort of tailored my letter just because I want to be more personal for me. But I'm happy to send out the letters and I'm happy to also loop him in. He's really, he's really strongly, you know, um, passionate about this, about this topic. So I'm sure he'd be happy to um, engage. With us yeah, more. I mean, it may, it may be that we can make a stronger ask than than simply say, you know, pretty please, Royal, would you transition? Maybe there's a contractual ability to 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 insist, or maybe the contract is coming up in another two years. I mean, there's, there's a variety of ways we can make our request effective if we know what what the leverage points are. 
Gotcha. Okay, David, yeah, sure. I will be happy to do that and I will loop you into um, an email with him. And, and just an aside, I mean, um, I don't know about sports in specific, but, uh, but Rynek doesn't have any busing. So the other half of the village doesn't. They do for sports. For sports, that's the, only, that's the one thing I don't know about. Yeah, no, in high school, they definitely use field trips, field. probably. Yeah, they don't do, they don't do field trips at Rynek High School. Oh, see, I'm halfway there. <laughs> I'm going to start it. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Mandy. Um, mm. so she and I have been talking quite a bit about having a um, event at the Mamaronek Library, um, something around monarch butterflies and Mandy's been in touch with um, a lot of publicists and authors and I'll just say as an aside, she has, Mandy, you could say you've gotten so many books donated. It's such a windfall that you actually were able to make really generous donations of these environmentally themed books, both to Central School and to MAS. And I believe you're gonna reach out to- um, I'm Dave working. I have to get Rynek is on my list this week. Okay. Yeah, I have to go research their contact, their librarian. Okay, well, Christy, you may know, but but anyway, those, those donations were really, really well received. I, I mean, I saw the emails, they were really thrilled to get those books. Um, and they'll say, you know, from us. Yeah. Um, but Mandy, I'm going to let you talk about, you know, the event. This is sort of your vision. And I think we're sort of also talking about maybe a few different things so we can get opinions of the group. Yeah, I don't know if everyone saw, I sent, if you had a chance to look at, I sent a link to a digital book that was like the preview copy. Um, it's what's called a children's book, but it definitely is educational enough that I would say an adult could read it and learn plenty. Um, it was written by, um, I believe, the director of Monarch Joint Venture, which is a really large nonprofit, obviously, that supports um, educating the public about monarch butterflies and their demise and what everyone could do to help. So we were thinking along with the mayor's monarch pledge and really just trying to follow up. We have three action items we need to do within a year um, to just kind of stay on plan. Um, one of them was perhaps to join with the library and do an author talk. And we ended up connecting with Anne Hobby, who is the director of Monarch Joint Venture, but she also wrote a beautiful book. And they, the publisher donated a bunch of copies, which are going to the various libraries. And we'll probably give one away at the Clean and Green event too. Um, and so she was an obvious choice because they were so receptive. And so now Ellen and I talked to the librarians, they were amazing, but we just couldn't really like wrap our heads around when this was going to be, because it, it has to be a Zoom. She doesn't live here. I did ask, you know, to let us know if she's ever in town, so to speak, to let us know. And she was so kind and said, when I'm in New York, I'll let you know. But, um, we're just trying to figure out when we should do the event. I think in the end, Ellen and I decided that we might need to wait to do it in the fall because a spring Zoom with a family-friendly event sounds crazy with expecting children to be home and sitting down and maybe having their parents, you know, log on and look at something. So we thought fall would probably be better. I don't know if anyone has any opinions. It might just be um, like a a quick read, not word for word, because it's a pretty long book. I think she said if she reads it word for word, it's 25 minutes, which is a lot for anyone to sit through. Um, so maybe just like the overall Q&A at the end. And it could easily be all ages. Um, there are plenty of gardeners and science folks and Girl Scouts who I'm sure would love to learn about it. So that's what we're up to. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on... Are we wrong to think that we should not host an event in spring and expect people to come online? I, I think there's, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead Christy. 
I mean, as far as schools are concerned, we are on like a fast track to through the spring. I mean, all yeah. of the sports events are starting to pick up and all the after school things are coming back. And it's it, there's a lot going on. Fall is also a very, very busy season. But mm -hmm. if you're early on, like maybe right around Labor Day, like that could be the time when people are just in position, but not like mm -hmm. on the racetrack yet. OK. And would you consider, because you have like, you know, people with school age children, I also feel like what day and what time? Uh, I was thinking Sunday afternoon, but again, I, you know, I have a six year old. I don't really know if it's applicable. Mm. Have you talked to the library at all in terms of their schedule or what they would recommend? Because they presumably have had some experience in scheduling things and seeing what the, what the, you know what pines are good for what age groups yeah i they were with us on the phone for quite some time today i think that they feel strongly about you know in-person events coming back but they don't seem to have a huge uh connectivity with online events especially with children so i don't know though i i don't know i don't even know who our market is per se i don't know if it's the kids at the library, it's adults. I'm not, I'm starting to be confused about it. I'm sorry. You know, David, David, just to answer your question, um, I know that you're familiar with the library. We had a really long conversation with um, Terry and, and Trish today mm -hmm. and very supportive of having an event for us. And what they said is, you know, after school, if we were to do it after school geared to kids, you know, they do have a captive audience because they always have kids coming after school, although, as the weather warms up, they have less and less kids because they are going to go to the park rather than the library. Mm -hmm. um, they said for a family event, um, like on a Sunday, they were a bit skeptical as to you know engagement because you know again if we're doing we talked about early June, the chances are you know kids are going to be more out with families and, and not really at home. So I think that Mandy and I were just sort of going in circles, which is why we wanted to get people's opinions because i think that adults are still open to doing an educational zoom in the evening so even though she's wrote a children's book per se i don't know if anyone looked at it it's really you know we could all learn from it and it's a very beautiful book and i don't i would never recommend that she read it for 25 minutes i think that would be a little boring mm -hmm. but if she did sort of like um just an overall talk about you know monarchs and their migration and their habits and all that other stuff, um, why they're being threatened. I mean, I think that could be interesting for sort of anyone. And, and, to, and she is willing to do a Zoom event. So I guess that's why we were saying maybe wait until, um, if it's gonna be a Zoom event, just wait until the fall when people maybe are home or I don't know. Um, is there a reason? To do something to celebrate the fact that Tom signed the um you know the monarch pledge we also oh. talked about teaming up with the mayor of port chester because they also signed the pledge mm -hmm. and the other thing that the library said is that they really are good at connecting with other libraries and doing sort of cross you know cross promoting events and having uh, especially when they do zooms so mm -hmm. go ahead dan is there a reason you can't have people come in person to the library but have the author zoom in so that it's not a zoom at home we actually talked about that um, and we could def we could do that. We actually could do that. It would still be an indoor event, but we could do that. Yeah, they called it a hybrid. I think that they thought that was also a good idea. How far away does, is this person? It's impossible for them to come? She's in Minnesota and they have, she has a pretty busy schedule. I had asked her, you know, are, will you be in New York yeah. anytime soon? And okay. her answer was, I will let you know when I am, but not, I don't have it on my schedule. Um, can I just throw something out, which is that, um, you know, we've got this pollinator um, thing that we're working on and we don't know exactly how that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's on the agenda, but I'll just throw it in there. It seems like good timing, if you don't mind. Is that okay, Ellen? Go ahead. Yeah, so um, this Thursday, we're gonna find out whether or not we can go ahead and apply. And then there's a, we have a month to put the grant together. So that's from um, whatever this- uh, Yeah, May, March 17th. 17th, 17th. Yeah. And then they let us know in May, May 17th, 
And then it basically kicks in sort of June. So I think the first phase of it is gonna be, you know, we're not gonna be planting that late in the season, but I think there'll be a lot of preparation going on. It, you know, assuming we get it, this is gonna be in action, like in the fall, you know, starting to clear some of the spaces. Um, so I'm just thinking there might, you know, if that's happening and we're, it, you know, we'll, we could sort of co-brand these things together somehow mm -hmm. and make your book an educational piece of our pollinator. Um, what do you think? I, I think that's great. I mean, I love your enthusiasm or positivity, I should say, about getting the grant. <laughs> I think that's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it may not happen, but if it does, this would work, you know. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Because, you know, Mandy and I also did talk about, right, to your point, co-branding or cross-branding all the things that we're doing sort of in the pollinator space, not making it just a book talk, making that one feature of a bigger event having to do with, you know, why pollinators are so important and, and all that. So I, I, I think that's actually another reason to push it to the fall. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I went to a, one library thing where, you know, if they have a book, they have book clubs where people read the book and then get the author and people have read the book or not, whatever. And then the author speaks. And I went to, I, it was a Zoom thing. I hadn't finished the book and I hadn't, I think I'd started the book. And um, it was very interesting though, you know, having this guy talk about his experience writing the book and then people asked a lot of questions. And I think, you know, if the library can get copies of the book, and that's what they do for these book club events. And yeah. Then, uh, people can read them, you know, beforehand and be familiar with it. So, so yeah. my thought is if if the author's not going to read the book, then do we have to be wedded to the book? Could you get someone local who knows about monarchs and have them speak and just have the book as a sort of giveaway if someone shows up? we could actually ask her if she's more interested in talking in general i mean she's the executive director of monarch joint venture i mean she's... yeah but there might be someone who's local who could talk about it. oh well that's true pollinator pathway folks i do know one person and i think she's in harrison who's pretty well versed in butterfly uh i know enough but i'm not a speaker. <laughs> well, you could also combine those two ideas. You could have someone local who is talking about the subject and have her via Zoom either read portions of her work or talk about her book. You don't have to do one or the other. Right. What they did, uh, the library was calling it a picture talk, right? Is that what they said, Mandy? A picture yeah, talk? That, I think that's because it's a beautifully illustrated book. So rather than you know, saying word by word, you're just sort of talking to the pictures. Yeah, I read it to my son tonight to test it out. Oh, uh, how'd that go? Uh, it was fine. I mean, but I read it in maybe six minutes, but I skipped a lot of the, you know, I mean, there's there's anatomy parts of, of the butterfly. And although that's amazing for me that wants to maybe read about it, my son doesn't want to hear, you know, specifics. And it's not that heavy of a book, but it's still a lot to read verbatim, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It took about six minutes and I did like an overall, you know, I skipped the monarchs dying. Right. I mean, I think that we have, you know, with the cleaning green in two months that we have a lot of planning for. I mean, we definitely want to do programming this year with the library. That was a goal of ours. And I think that, I think we're in agreement to do it around sort of this topic of pollinators, butterflies, whatever. But my vote would be to push it to the fall and sort of flesh this out a little more. We know that she's available, um, but maybe to Liam's point, we can get somebody local, do an in-person or, mm -hmm. um, or yeah, or just figure out something yeah. different. And I think also we'll know then about, about the grant and if we do right. get the grant, I think there's been a lot more fanfare around this, right? Because yeah, mm -hmm. fall is great in general. I mean, they migrate. It's it's a great conversation starter. It's when they migrate out, and you can actually plant milkweed seeds in the ground, and they will come up the following year. They just have to be in the ground 
maybe by November for the ground freezes. So fall is, is really probably better. I was pushing for June for pollinator week, but it just doesn't fit the more I think of it. It's just too soon and it's a lot of, you know, I don't know, rush. It's you know, it would be great if you can get some seeds too. I know you're good at that. And we oh, I have some hand seeds. out seeds, you know, to people who might want to plant them in their yards, you know. At yes, I got a, a bag. I don't even know how much it weighs from um, Monarch Watch. Okay. They like to send them and they sent literature. So we have that too. So can, can I just ask a general question about the mayor's Monarch Pledge? Are we effectively responsible for making sure that those three things happen this year? Yes. Like committee? Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me just tell you, Tom is not going to be. Right. Okay. He's not going to dig up the milk, make a milkweed patch in front of the police station. That would be fun. <laughs> But we could. <laughs> yes, we could. We need a demonstration garden, but that's another story. Okay. <clears throat> then the then they're gonna rip that up to rip when they redo the building. So oh well, yeah, that that would be yeah. good. Yeah, they'll, re they'll receive themselves, no problem. <laughs> so All right, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep moving along, but I think that I think that um, Mandy, I think we're headed for the fall. Oh, yeah, we could talk more I about. The event, but I, I think um, we should also get back to the librarians and yeah, uh, I, I think that it'll probably be a relief for them too because it sounded like they had a lot going on. I agree, and then it probably will also we have to space it because if you're going to do another cleanup event in fall, yeah, so maybe we do September November, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to move on to the next agenda item, which. Um, I know we've talked about, but we haven't really like dug in to how this is gonna go, which is um, the litter awareness campaign. And I know that we could sort of tie this into the grant if we get it, because a lot of the litter that we saw happened to be by the rivers and in the rivers. Um, and obviously, you know, the clean and green is something that we deal with with the litter. But I, we talked about branding. We talked about maybe the village getting new different more um, sort of eye-catching bins than the old sort of steel bins. Um, so I was putting together a list of names. I'm not really a good branding person, but I think that we should try to maybe just email around some names for a campaign and, and just sort of kick this off with Clean and Green because I think that would just really go well together. And then we can get new bins and do signage and and have this be like an ongoing campaign in the village, you know, for whenever, for whenever. Um, because I think that we all agree that this is a problem. Um, it's an eyesore. Uh, it's, you know, somebody told me, I felt so bad about this, that her parents were coming to town and she didn't even know if she wanted to walk through town with them because she was embarrassed about the litter. I'm like, that's, that's just awful. Um, so I just, I think that we need to, get on this. Um, so Chrissy, I don't know if you had ideas for specific, you know, campaign names or if you had thoughts. You know, I, I, I've been, I have been trying to think of a single slogan for months since, since we started talking about this. In yeah, fact, when I was too. traveling, I was noticing quite a bit of um, localized signs. And, and the thing that I can only come to, which it might be the easiest path, is to not have a singular slogan to simply because there's not everyone listens to the same message. Not everyone has the same important values. And I think that if we can just start, you know, let's say there's four of them, you know, just to pull it out of the air. So we have four or five slogans that we think are good we could try them out. We can hand make some signs around the clean and green and we can just maybe get some feedback because I think trying to isolate one, we've now spent two or three months like trying to figure out which one is the right one. And I don't, I don't feel like, I think there's so much diversity that one message really doesn't carry it. So I'd rather just throw a few at it and start passing along and then maybe see if we can get some cooperation to, you know, once we have a few and maybe if we get some feedback from it, then try to narrow it down and, and then, you know, put it on, on the village, you know, pick up 
trucks or you know i mean whatever but but i think for now like uh, just like i'm not going to be the one that's going to know the right slogan so mm-hmm. let's try a few okay yeah I, I don't think it has to be one i think that's a good idea so how can we try to um represent these i mean are we going old school and like making some handmade signs and we'll you know put them up in the neighborhoods before the clean and green or i mean i don't this is where Mandy, you're good with like, let me have this idea because. Um, probably. What about those signs? I keep seeing, and I feel like they're effective when I drive around the ones that everyone put up for the murals, like save the Mamaroneck high school murals. I see those signs everywhere. They're like little lawn signs. Yeah. I mean, like a little lawn sign would be a good way to go. Cause we would probably have permission to put it just about anywhere. Mm-hmm. Being we- that it's for the village. And if we, make cardboard signs they may end up getting wet and ending up being litter yeah yeah Yeah. so (laughs) wouldn't be good yeah so maybe like those little tiny tiny vinyl ones that stick in the grass i don't know yeah the problem is i don't think we have a budget (laughs) i wonder if someone would print them locally and donate them (laughs) well i think we may have a budget i mean we could also we could put signage on the bins themselves. We could, we could have like, I was thinking metal signs that sort of get put into the ground around mm-hmm. the areas that we noticed were most littered in the village. Like when we were at the Rockland Pocket or um, Christy, when we oh, were behind the, um, oh, by Phil's Park Place with where those tables usually are. Are and the trash cans there? Are there trash cans there? Not enough. Well, I don't think there's a lot of value in putting up a sign if there's no trash can. Yeah. There, there is a sign that says there's a fee if you litter, but there's no trash can. So there's a $250 fine sign, but no trash can and a lot of trash. Well, I think yeah. a trash can's better than a sign. A trash mm-hmm. can with a sign on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's Yeah, I agree, Liam. I think we need trash cans with signs. Exactly. So, so a couple of years ago, when I was on the board of Shore Acres Property Owners Association, we had a problem with there being a trash can of people just dumping stuff. And we took the trash cans out. Um, so I'm wondering if that's an issue. If, you know, is, is the problem that we don't have enough trash cans? And if we put more trash cans around does that encourage people to just take their household trash and 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 dump it in the trash cans that are available in a public place um, I mean, been, why would they do that we have trash pickup why would they be dumping it uh, in a all i can say is that was an issue that we had to confront yeah. and we solved the problem but of course it didn't solve any problem by by mm-hmm. removing the trash cans right yeah but did you end up with more trash then Correct. I mean, I'm, I'm just raising the issue <laughs> yeah. as to is the answer putting up more signs, putting up more trash cans. If you put up more trash cans, are you going to run into the problem that people are using it to dump their household trash as opposed to having the trash cans used for what they're supposed to be used for? Well, the DPW would know that since there are yeah. trash cans around the village, if it's been a problem in the past, they can let us know. Otherwise, we can ask them to add more trash cans. So, David, who was responsible for emptying your trash cans? I think it was the village, and the village okay. didn't do it. Right. You know, Lou, I, I guess I'll pose this question to you, and not that I'm expecting you to have the answer. Sure. Um, but maybe it's something that you could just go back and ask. Is that I do wonder when I see, you know, when I walk around and I see trash bins like along Boston Post Road or down yeah. you know, the avenue, they always look full to me. And I, I, it just would be an interesting thing to find out how often they get emptied. And mm-hmm. is there any rhyme or reason to where they are located? Because There is, I, a, sch- there is a schedule. Um, uh, there has been, there, I've been made aware of, uh, of issues along the avenue, especially on the weekends um there's it's a matter of resources and, and and when they can get to it i will um i know they get emptied i again i mentioned this last time we have brand new ones uh in columbus park where i live 
yeah. and uh, they're very nice. And uh, and and I I see them along uh, the avenue, but uh, getting them uh, getting them uh, serviced is uh, is 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 uh, DPW's uh, job, and uh, we wrestle with that. Jerry wrestles with that. I know we uh, we tend to the main avenue in, in Mamaroneck more than the other uh, other areas, but um, I can bring it up if you'd like. If you'd like me to, if you want to verbalize a, a request, I'll bring it to them, and uh, and I'll ask Jerry about it. All right, maybe I'll send you an email because I'm curious about the frequency of the pickup and how you know is there a reason to their locations. Yeah, I guess that the further question is, if we were to put more trash cans around in an attempt to stop li liquor, uh, littering, would that be a resource constraint for the village to pick those, you know, to pick those, to pick those trash, to empty those trash cans on a, on right. a, on a regular basis? Well, like, I, I know... I, I, yeah, I, like do know I, we're in the, in the, I do know we're in the process of beefing things up. We have a very good budget that we're working on now. So um, we're hoping things will, uh, will, will uh, uh, get a little bit more robust um, going forward. Um, that, but I, I hear you. I'll, I'll, I'll tell them that, uh, that that's an issue. And, and David, what you said about the, uh, the trash cans, I mean, that's a perennial problem with public trash cans. It's a problem in New York City. It's a problem everywhere they are that, that, that somebody might decide to bring their household trash. That's uh, you know it's a violation and uh, and again and we you know it's just a, it's an enforcement issue. Hmm. Are there extra trash cans sitting around somewhere that could be placed other places that we own? Just curious. Like oh, no. I feel like there's so many places that there's litter everywhere. Like do, does the village own extra trash cans that could simply be put out? I um. I guess so. I, I I would think, and and again, I'm just I'm just uh, listening here. Um, yeah. uh, what what you might want to do is come up with with a, a list of of of, of uh, priorities that you would you would like the board to address, and we'll and we'll tackle it uh, rather than come at it piecemeal with uh, uh, with uh, you know trash cans here, signs there. You know, just say we you want a coordinated. If there's a coordinated plan you'd like to come up with, I think that's something. Uh, they can do because I, I'll, I'll tell you this: if it's if it's not focused, <laughs> you're not going to get them to focus. I mean, they they they're, they're uh, so um, they 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 need they need recommendations from you is what they need. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So what I'll we, do is oh, I will, I'm sorry. Do we need to go out and document? You know, like some like all of us mm -hmm. to come back and say, okay. Here's a spot where the, we could really the, use a trash can. There's stuff here, and this sidewalk, you know, we should have a trash can here. Should we should we put that together as a as an ask for the village? You, you could put some recommendations in. Uh, we wouldn't expect you to do a comprehensive uh, survey, and <laughs> uh, and we'll and, and we'll we'll tell them. You know, we we think that the that the the litter situation is getting out of control. I mean, I brought this up with the parks before. You know, they come up with, they added a bunch of new regulations for the parks, but we're not reinforcing the ones we already have. So, uh, so, and litter is one of the things I would like to see them crack down on. Uh, so th that your voice on this would be very, very helpful. Okay. It would, it would, it would seem to me that the people that would have the most knowledge of where the most trash is and where the most litter is and how, where the most overfilled trash cans are is DPW itself. I mean, they're the ones that are doing this 24-7. Can they give us some recommendations? If, if we were to say, you know, if we wanted to improve trash collection or reduce litter, where would be their recommendations as to where to put more trash cans and how often they needed to be emptied? Sure. I mean, they, they already know what they know. What they, what they might not know is something that you've noticed. So that's that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. We can we can uh, we can get them to work on it. But uh, again, the staff is very, very spread very thin. We're we're light on a number of positions. Um, uh, things have been, gotten to a a fairly low level, and, and and we need to beef it up again. So um, uh, I, I you know I we I keep, it's hard to give them a lot of additional tasks because essentially they're going from emergency to emergency, and 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 uh, and that's that's why things are the way they are. So, you know, I mean. If I could just ask one sort of, uh, because I think that we could certainly garner, gather all that information up. Um, the trash cans are generally speaking on Mimeric village property. 
or you know i've seen for example next to i don't know how to describe this the the liquor store next to fe bellows has a trash can that was once donated by toyota uh it's a cement exterior with a metal interior and it's one of very few sort of sidewalk trash cans i've seen but it has a little plaque it's old donated mm -hmm. by toyota um i wouldn't expect that that intersection is necessarily public property so um it would be helpful if we're going to do a survey of where a trash can would be useful um does it need to be on village property and if not you know could we solicit donors and you know there's some something has happened before i just it's hard to I, i'd love to help gather information I just want to know what the criteria might be for the village it's got to be village property but um uh, you, you you could you could we couldn't enlist the um uh the assistance of the chamber and 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 uh, and uh, ask the merchants because the merchants believe me i, I walked a uh, memoric avenue and, and and went into every store on memoric avenue and uh and that's an issue for them they're they're not they're not happy they're not happy with it so um, uh, it, it can be a multi uh, it can be a a, a, a multi level approach, but um, you, you know let them let us know that it's a it's a priority for you, and we'll bring it to them and 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 we'll we'll open a discussion. Place fully pretty full right now though I'll tell you that much. Hey, Lou, with the new budget, are they planning to hire more people at the DPW? I should know that, and I don't. I'm sorry. I, I apologize, Dan. I, I haven't gotten uh, gotten that deep into it. Okay, so I think just to wrap this up, what I what I'll do is I'll I'll craft an email, send it out to the group, um, with what we're talking about, with the ultimate um, purpose of sending it on to you, Lou, and then everybody maybe in the next week or so you could add to it of locations mm -hmm. that you think are needed, um, any ideas, any branding. So we could just have a sort of collaborative email going out to Lou and then he could sort of take it from there. How's yeah, I, it's, it's not, I, and, and I'll put it on a work agenda. Yeah. Uh, and probably sometime next next month or, or whatever, but we're, we're backed up. There's stuff on the, on the, on the, uh, on the work set work session agenda that's been there for, uh, for three or four sessions and, and that we can't get to for okay. various reasons I don't want to get into, but yeah. um, uh, we're, we're, ba we're backed up. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I, I understand that. I, I It would just be ideal if we could sort of get this kicked off by Clean and Green, which will be May 7th. But Clean and Green is, is when again? It's May 7th. Um, okay. I'm just going to hit on one more point and then we'll we'll get into that, if that's okay. Okay. Um, uh, I could, so, I, they, it came up at a meeting and I couldn't remember the date. So that's why I'm okay. writing it down. It's my sure, fault. Sure, sure. Um, so... Every year, May 15th, is the start of the leaf blower ban. Um, last year, um, Lou, you wouldn't know this, but we did actually a door hanger campaign where um, Jerry had, I think, some guys, it was a parks department or some, some of the staff guys come around and they place it on each and every residential door. And Liam helped, um, well, he did, he designed it. It was great. It basically, one side was you know, talking about the ill health effects, environmental effects of gas <laughs> blowers, and the other side was, you know, what the law is and what you should do if you see somebody, um, you know, breaking the law, you know, call the police, whatever. So starting May 15th until I think it's um, September 30th, there really, there's not supposed to be any use of um, leap blowers. The municipality, however, we know <laughs> is not subject to that ban, which um, people like to point out, and we're hoping to um, fix that. But with the kickoff of May 15th, as I said, last year we did the door hanger. We could think about doing that again. Um, someone I know in Scarsdale told me that Scarsdale, I haven't seen it, that they have somewhere, maybe on the fire station, an LED sign that's very prominent that tells their residents, you know, FYI, this is coming, you know, be aware because they also have the um, the ban that goes into effect, into effect there. So I guess I'm just broaching this topic because, you know, enforcement has traditionally been very lax. And I think, you know, the more awareness, the better. I do think that Larchmont's new law helps us because a lot of the landscapers who work in Mamaronek also work in Larchmont. And so they're getting sort of more used to the idea of having a ban because their ban is much stricter than ours. 
Um, but I'm just curious to people's thoughts about how we should go about informing. If we could, you know, Jerry could do a robocall. We could just have it part of the, you know, Robert's newsletter. We could do the door hanger again. Um, so I'm just curious what people's thoughts are. Is, is large fonts so stricter because don't they allow electric leaf blowers in large font? They, they only allow electric. They do not allow gas powered. Right. I, I really think it's a problem that we're not allowing electric leaf blowers because I, I think that, you know, we're asking people to go from, you know, blowing to raking. I don't think that's realistic. And I, I, I see, you know, I just think the leaf blower situation, I don't know that it's really improved at all with this ban. And I think if we did more maybe to let people use electric blowers, people would be more willing to transition away from the gas powered blowers because the gas powered blowers are really the problem, both in terms of pollution, health concerns and noise. Well, what I'll, what I'll say to that is gas powered is just awful. I mean, it is just, they are awful. They are right. really There's awful. no question that There's we no they question need about to it. not be. They and they should be, be banned 100%, but we can't for now because it puts a strain and a burden on, on landscapers. They can't just overnight transition their equipment. But what I would say is that um, I believe that Lodge Fund has a blackout period altogether. And then when you are allowed to use gas, uh, I'm sorry, leaf blowers, they need to be electric. Exactly. So it's yeah. not that they're allowed they to ban them all exactly. year long. So so they, yeah, they do ban them the same way we do. They do. Yeah. But when they allow them, they only allow electric. Correct. I say for yeah. the rest of the year. Yeah. I see. For the rest of the year. And you know, one thing I recently learned with all this attention on pollinators is that. I guess it was a week, I think it was last week maybe, where there was a couple of nice days and around where I live, all the landscapes were out with the gas powered leaf blowers. Yes. And what I felt really bad about now that I'm like more aware, more educated on this whole issue of pollinators, like the pollinators are not done overwintering. Like they're like disrupting <laughs> their habitat. No. Like they're blowing them, they're blowing them out of their homes. <laughs> <They're> just, <laughs> They just oh got God. rid of all their fireflies, by the way. I felt so freaked out by that. And I'm like, what are we even blowing here? Like, where have leaves fallen in, <laughs> you know, December, January, and February? Like, what is going on here? It's so nutty. Yeah, it's but so anyway, I, I just think that there's no question that a law can be improved. No question about that. But where we are right now is that we do have this ban coming upon us in exactly two months. So we should think about how we want to make sure everybody knows about it. And I do think that enforcement has been a bit of a joke. I hate to be crude like that, okay. but I think it's been a bit of a joke. Go ahead, Mandy. Um, I was just gonna say, if you wanna do this, speaking of the fireflies, it's kind of cheesy, but we could do, there is a flyer that like Healthy Yards uses and I can do something similar, like a little graphic and maybe I could appeal to the like Facebook Mamaronek Larch moms and dads group that if you want to see more fireflies, this is why you don't see them or this is what you need to do. Because every little kid in America wants to run around and look for fireflies. It's everybody's childhood. And you Excuse could- me, I love it too. Yeah, I mean, you could appeal <laughs> that way. And maybe if we convert a few moms who are like, do we use those? I mean, because I don't know. I don't want my kid sucking in those fumes. I don't want to suck in the fumes. But for some reason, they don't think about that. I don't know why. They let their kids play on the grass while these people are working, which blows my mind. But yeah. um, but we could do like multi-tiered, you know, I, I do like the educational factor, but you could sentimental factor. I don't yeah, know. I like, I like the sentimental factor. Okay. You create a graphic, push it to the moms. Would that be a little piece of information, just a sentence or two that you could have on your door hanger, you know, vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, to so that people know that yeah. using blowers apart from everything else, you know, destroys this, you know, the pollinator habitat. So yeah, you know, I mean, so I, I think about the pollinator habitat, but I, for some reason, 
I think of like a neighbor that just doesn't care. Somebody with kids will care more about lightning bugs. I know that sounds silly, but I don't know if someone who speaks lightning bug will speak overwintering butterflies. I don't know. It just sounds different. Yeah. Push you, lightning bugs. I mean, the one thing that kids, bothered me. The parents. Hmm? The, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I was just saying, if you convince the kids, they will convince their parents. It's yes, easier path. Sorry, Ellen. No, it's good. the one thing that did bother me about the door hanger campaign was that it was, you know, people look at it and then it goes in the trash. And I don't want to do things that create mm. trash. I mean, maybe some people stuck it up in the bulletin board. I, I don't know. I just, I would love for there to be a more efficient, you know, way to get the message out because I don't, I think that there should be more enforcement, but before we enforce, we really need to make sure that everybody understands the dates that they, that they know come May 15th and the landscapers need to know. Well, we need to talk to the landscapers. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, landscapers are running a business. That's why they all show up in the middle of March, even if there's, you know, only a little bit to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have to talk to them because that's most of the most of the leaf blowing is done by landscapes. But the problem is, it costs more if they aren't blowing the leaves. People still want all these leaves removed. You know, I've tried talking to the board here, and it's just no, you know, no, like we can't do that. We need to, you know, have the place look nice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then, and it costs more if you're going to be having a bunch of guys out raking instead of blowing. They won't rake. Well, they won't rake. Yeah. So what? Well, are the, what are... <laughs> have you spoken with the gardeners? They will not. No, rake. no, I don't. I don't. Not even an option. Them. Even if you're willing to pay for them to do it, they won't do it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they will not. So what is the <laughs> option? What is the option then? I mean, oh. these guys are doing what they think that the people who are paying their bills want right. them to do. Right. And, and so they will continue doing it. If they're not getting fined, they're going to carry on doing it. Right? right. So it has to be, you know, your kids asking you, please, mommy, stop them from blowing the leaves. And like, there's, there's that. And then there's our robo calls basically telling everyone, you're not supposed to do it and we're going to fine you. And then you've got to, we have to somehow get the police to start actually finding people. And that definitely didn't happen last year. And I know Ellen, you went and spoke with the chief of police. I mean, I don't know what else we can do, but- Who are you know, even supposed to call? You're supposed to actually call the police station? Police. Yes, yeah. you are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I called the police station once. I called them a couple of times not, and they, they don't come in time and the guys are gone, so. You know, it would be really interesting, Lou. I don't know if the village has a list of all the landscapers that work in the village, because maybe we just send letters, like good old fashioned letters to all the landscapers just saying, you know, just be on notice. I'm sorry, my computer's. Um... Well, doesn't Larchmont have a thing where they there's a you know certain landscapers are like registered with the town or something isn't there something they do like that maybe well, i think i think there is some kind of thing they do i don't know I can look at yeah, that, that actually that actually raises another issue that, that we've talked about in the past which we haven't talked about tonight but the concept of trying to homogenize the rules between Larchmont Mamara, and the village in town of Marinette, because that's part of the problem is that the, both the landscapers are subject to all different rules and they, you know, maybe it's ignorance or maybe it's um, just an excuse, but if every jurisdiction is a different rule, it's much more complicated for everybody. Have we given up on the idea of trying to make make the rules of the three communities consistent? Um, I personally think that the Larchmont ban is, is just not gonna go over well here. Um, it, it's really, you know, I, I guess I wanted to see how it went for a year because it started January 
in 2022. So this is really the first season of it. And I know that they had an event, um, I think like two weeks ago, and they had a lot of pushback at their event. It was um, basically, it was like a healthy, like a quiet gardening something event. And I think some landscapers showed up and really just took over the event and it did not go well. Because mm -hmm. um, I think landscapers are very angry at their, I mean, it's a very strict law. And I, mm -hmm. I laud them for their, you know, for their passion and for taking, you know, sort of a strong stance, but I, I, I think it needs to be more gradual. And I don't think that, as I said, our ban is, it could use improvement for sure. Um, but the reality is that for the most part, you know, during the summer months, there's not a lot of leaves to really blow. So it shouldn't really be a big deal. I think what gets blown a lot, or like I know I have this by my house, like the stuff that falls from some of the trees. They're not mm -hmm. leaves. It's like this stuff. Yeah, it's seeds. It's, it's seeds, flowers, things yeah. that fall off yeah. after they die. Leaf, the, the grass cuttings. And the grass cuttings. Yeah. They do that all summer. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. But I, I really just, you know, I think that at this point, we really, you know, and I'm going to send a note to Jerry, we just need more enforcement and awareness by the landscapers. Um, I, I don't know that we need to do a door hanger per se, but I do think we need some signage and some awareness um, by homeowners and, and by the landscapers. This is the law. It's the law. It was the law for a reason. Um, and as these landscapers transition more and more to, to electric, I think we could be a little more liberal in the time frame that they could use it. But as I said, there's no reason for any leaf blowing in March when the pollinators are still sort of overwintering in our yards. And it was nice. heavy, like that nice week. It, it was, was crazy. over near this co-op over near me. Yeah. It was like, I don't even know. <laughs> they were yeah, my block was like a war zone. It was really nuts. It was they, bad. They, were, they were doing it today up the um, well, it's actually in Harrison on the next block over. It was blowing. And I really think we should there. should turn change it so that it's like they can use electric because I just think people would be more willing to transition and be abiding with the law if if there's some way for them to also have their you know pristine lawns, which I know we don't really want to start with, but <laughs> I feel like we have to like, you know, we're, you know, we should really be going by baby steps. And we took this giant leap with, you know, telling people they can't have what they want. And it's just, I don't think it's been a success. I don't know how Larchmont, so Larchmont has a new law? Yeah. That just passed. It, well, it passed like a year ago, but it became effective in January. Oh. That's more strict than their. Yeah, I can't uh, tell you what it is verbatim, yeah, but it, they only allow leaf blowing a few months a year, and it has oh. to, and it has to be electric. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with it. <laughs> it will be interesting because it really it's it's much stricter than any other municipality in Westchester. Well, Ellen, as we uh, as the village starts to transition to all electric or I mean, I know that's going to be a slow process. Is there any plans to transition the landscapers to, you know, or just say over the next few years that we're going to ban gas and keep electric so to give the landscapers time to transition? I know my landscaper has both and, you know, he'll he'll use electric if I tell him or, you know, depending on what the yeah. load leaves are. Yeah, I do think they're all going to transition. I, I think that the price points are going down. I agree, my landscaper as well, because I told him I don't want any gas here. And all of a sudden he has electric, never mentioned it before. So yeah, I think that they're all starting to um, invest in electric. Because you know, if I had that conversation three years ago, oh, the electric, you know, it only lasts a half an hour. There's nowhere to plug in. It was like every excuse in the book. And somehow now he's electric. So it, it, this, is, this is, you know, it, it's a gradual process, but to start where, um, I mean, to finish where I started, it's just, we have something on the books that needs to be um, communicated and enforced. So I think that that's sort of where we need to focus right now. Um, I do, I need to move along, but I think that we're gonna get to that, you know, I'm really happy that the village is sort of 
really moving towards electrifying its fleet, which I think is really um, great on a few points. One, it takes a, the hypocrisy out of it. And then I think it also is great for demonstration that people walking by seeing them at Harbor Island using electric, like, oh, that actually works. That's quiet, that's nice. You know, I think that people could actually see it for themselves. And isn't um, it so expensive right now? Why would anyone want to use it? Isn't what's so expensive? Gas yeah. is so expensive right oh, yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they use a lot of gas. Yeah, yeah, that could be another good reason to switch that over. That could be a good point. I mean, if you wanna like do a multi-tiered little, even in Robert's newsletters or something, I mean, it's pricey. Yeah, it is. Um, so just uh, a few things in community engagement, we're gonna, um, Bandy and I are gonna attend the Central School Earth Day. Um, I will try to get signups for the, um, you know, food scrap pickup. And I think that's the main Anyone wants to come. <laughs> Anybody wants to come. Um, our bigger event, as I said, Cleaning Green is May 7th. And um, we still need to, um, we'll probably do the zones we've done in the past with less people at the harbor, because we've all talked about that it's fairly clean as a Kyle's efforts. Um, but we need to get together and draw up zones to include the riverbeds um, and any other areas. Um, because I think that we've ignored parts of this village. I never realized as you know, Kay pointed out on that amazing walk we went on that there are really parts of this village that need to clean up. And um, we will have our compost give back, which is great. I think everybody always appreciates that. And then we may collaborate with the Marine Education Center to do some sort of you know, event that morning there. Um, I had a brief email exchange with Kyle and I guess now they have a touch tank. Uh, Mandy, you probably know about that. Yeah, in, in the... In the yeah, I, have, I haven't been there in years, literally. Yeah, so, they do. So that could be fun for kids, you know, like a, like a little kids event. Yeah. Um, so that's something that maybe we'll do. Um, uh, and Robert is throwing up a flyer, which we'll be getting at. Oops, lost you. <laughs> we lost. I'm sorry, Mandy, what were you going to say? No, you were, you were you frozen. Were frozen. Lost. Um, <laughs> oh, I was frozen? You were frozen. <laughs> yes, Robert will be doing a flyer. Flyer. <laughs> and you froze. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I was just thinking uh, two things about like the zones. Um, should we invite, I, I know that kayaks go out sometimes to do a cleanup and someone had written us that they were going to go out and they did it on their own last cleanup. Should we make a zone that someone, so that they feel compelled to go do it? I bumped yeah. a guy at the park and he told me, I want to do it on my kayak the day you do it. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, great idea. So that could be a zone and let them all come because that'll be a different group of people who might not normally come just to go pick up regular trash. Uh-huh. Yeah. Great idea. That sounds fun. Kayak zone. Yeah. Kayak zone. Oh, and another weird, two weird notes from last time, but the children, like the teenagers, they need to go out with people who know what they're doing. I don't know if you remember the pictures of the teenagers picking up leaves at the last cleanup event. Oh my God. Yeah. So I don't know what we should do about them, but they care, but I just, they're just misdirected. I don't know if I need to print out a little, like, this is what you need to do, or this is what you should be looking for because they were so sweet and they were sending me pictures on Instagram, but like two different groups, they were picking up leaves with the rapes. They were very confused. And I think that they can do better than that. I don't know. I know it's hard for us to get like captains of each area because not everyone has the capability of, you know, leading a group, but maybe we put them somewhere specific. Just the thought. Um, yeah, I, I, I think, I don't think that was a pervasive problem, but I think that we can certainly, when we have all the volunteers send out specific instructions of what we're looking for them to pick up. I think I can imagine them having a rake saying, what am I supposed to do with this? It is really mm -hmm. just the beach stuff that comes up on the beach, but we could, to me, that's just a communication issue. So I'm, I'm glad you're mentioning that that happened. Um, I didn't remember that. Um, my zone that I was at with, with kids from MHS 
uh, we, they were picking up trash. So I, I didn't personally have that issue, but yeah. And it is hard to get captains for every zone because there's a lot of zones there. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I would say about kayaks is May 7th, the water is really still very cold. I think you should really hold off on kayaks till the fall because, oh. you know, if anybody should get fall in or have something happen, the water's cold still. Um, just oh, I mean, I'd be happy to go out. I love going out in the kayak and picking up trash, but I think it has to be organized with people who actually make sure you know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. So that's the only thing I would yeah. say about it. Um, well, let me know, let, let me know if, if you think that you're going to be able to come and then I'll know, at least from our group, how many zone leaders we could have and then how many we sort of need to get from outside of this committee. And um, because I, I do think it works better when there is a, a zone leader. I wasn't here last year, so I'm just curious to know, um, like how, roughly how many zones do you have? I think last year we may have had- 12 or 13. I'll say 12, yeah. Okay. But I think we'll do more this year because mm -hmm. I think, as I said, we talked about the riverbanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they have to be done on like village property, all the, all the clean zone areas. Well, this is a village cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because some of those places back behind uh, in that industrial area or whatever, they're <laughs> kind of private, I think, right? A lot of those areas. Some are, some aren't. Yeah. But we could, you know, we could look at that Rockland pocket area that I don't think was on the list last year. I was there with my oh, neighbor. Okay. I live there. <laughs> not did, there that, 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 that little section away. that's not parked, because I, yeah. I know I, I ended up, I didn't come to it, but um, I saw it and it didn't seem like it was on, it was on the signup sheet. I just created it with one of my neighbors and we took our... Okay children out and just cleaned up on that steep slope. I mean, we okay. couldn't do much by ourselves, but we just kind of did it here. Okay. Because okay. well, we'll definitely have that as, we'll have that as a goes visit. online and signs in to work in a certain a specific area. So, you know, yeah. you want to, if it's going to be cleaned up, you want to have it in there in your, you know, in your database. Um, oh, Ellen, that's, I'm so sorry. I don't think we should let the children sign up for zones that aren't monitored. Oh no! I, I just think that? they shouldn't be out there by themselves. That's what I was thinking because when she was saying like Rockland Pocket and stuff, I think you definitely need certain zones that where the community service will be validated. Um, I think we'll just get more use out of it. But like you can't just let the kids go to just a random park. That's just my own opinion because they're not like supervised at all. Like their parents aren't even with them. Well, oh, okay. I mean. These these are details that we could talk about. We need to okay. get the agenda, but I, I, yeah, I, I mean, when I think of the students, I'm thinking more of like the Mamaroneck High School um, Honest Society because they need the credits. We get a lot of the um, the scouts, but the younger kids are usually with their parents, um, and they're doing it for service. So, <laughs> you know, okay. I I'm not gonna yeah okay okay yeah um. So I just want to give everyone an update on what's going on with the clean energy communities and climate smart communities. Um, we had a meeting March 1st, which I think was fairly productive. And we um, sort of from that, I think have a better understanding of like what the village has done, what we haven't done. And after that, I attended, and I think Dan, you did too, mm -hmm. um, the Sustainable Westchester webinar on um, building decarbonization and advancing um, uh, clean energy codes. And I found it very, really interesting. And what I learned is that buildings account for one third of all carbon emissions in New York state. Um, so decarbonizing buildings really, really has an impact. And there are 10 municipalities in Westchester, um, including the town of Mimarinic and New Rochelle that have adopted the, um, the stretch code. And we have until June to 
to adopt it if we want to, you know, be eligible for a grant. So I know that's short notice. I personally think this is something that we should really um, get behind with a resolution and take before the board, because I really think that, you know, I, I don't know if you heard the mayor of New Rochelle talk about this, um, that he felt that the code did not create any obstacles, that he actually felt that the city became more attractive to mission-based investors, um, that the energy efficiency improved market values. And, you know, hearing that from the mayor of New Rochelle just sort of convinced me that if New Rochelle could do it, we certainly should be able to do that. Um, so I would very much be in favor of trying to get the village to adopt the New York stretch code. Right, and, they, and they also said that buy-in from the building department was probably the greatest turtle and it's really doesn't put much more work on them at all. It sounded like it was an outside party, a third party that would come in and check, you know, for the stretch, if they met the stretch code. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that it was just, it, it was just sort of more paperwork um, related with, with the building department. It wasn't much more than they were, would have to do anyway. So. And it's where we're going to be anyway. So it's really right. getting a jump start on where we're going to be in a couple of years. Well, I think the third party did the energy part of the stretch code and the building department did the sort of structural parts. So, and, you know, as I said to you in the email I sent the other day that, you know, the building inspector in Hastings uh, they've already done a lot of work and they're willing to share it, okay? So, you know, he would be someone who could sort of help, would help sell it into the building department. Um, I mean, I don't know if anyone's still got any questions about it because we did talk about it at the end of last year. So you're on uh, mute, David. Sorry, there, I, this, I, at, at least one of the questions that was raised last year was whether it raises the cost of construction. And I don't know that we got a very good answer one way or the other on that. Well, I think what they're, you know, it obviously depends on the project, but there is a small rise in the cost of the building construction, but that's offset eventually buy the savings in energy. But, but that, I mean, that's the kind of question that we should be prepared to answer because <clears throat> if we're asking the, the board to enact this, that would be well, a I mean, question I, I, would, yeah, I, can, would, I yeah. would ask. Yeah, I mean, I can answer that question. I just didn't have the figures in front of me right now. So if I went- that, That's the point. I think we need to do, do a little homework and I'm sure, you know, because people have done this, there's, there's statistics out there that will, will establish, you know, what the percentage additional cost is and what, what the payback is. Uh, we're not, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to get the information so that we can answer those questions. That information was actually part of the meeting. I don't, I'm looking at my notes. Um, I know that that was discussed. And I, I want to say it was like a seven to nine year payback, but to Liam's point, it's going to obviously depend on the project, but I think that was the average payback period was between seven and nine years. And it varies whether it's commercial or, so I think the commercial payback was a little longer, if I remember rightly. Um, that makes sense because the costs are higher. It's a bigger project. Of course, of course, that those those figures are probably outdated if the cost of energy is rising, the payback is quicker. Well, the cost of everything's rising. So the cost That's of construction's true. rising. <laughs> true. So, right. Put it this way, the the increase in lumber that I just got billed for my extension is a lot less than what the stretch code would is a lot more than what the stretch code would demand of me okay you know so you know it's just I, I feel like given what we know it's if we know that there are better ways to do this out there that any new building 
going up, especially multifamily building, right? I mean, if we wanted to tear this in, I don't even know if that's a possibility, but any multifamily dwelling that goes up in this village at this point should certainly adhere to a New York stretch code. It should not have old energy codes in it. It's just, mm -hmm. I, I think that's just irresponsible. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, the fact that there are 10 municipalities in Westchester, you know, it, it's not like that, Mamar you know, developers is going to say, oh, Mamaronek, it's difficult to build there. No, that, well, there are 10 other municipalities as of, that was a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure it's going to change because I, with this June date, that's an incentive, um, you know, for more municipalities to get on board. And I'm sure they will. Ellen, did you say 10 have adopted? 10 have. Okay. Including okay. the town, though. Okay, so I pulled up the information that on this. So the analysis was a 1500 to 2500 dollar to the cost of construction of a single family home, but with an almost 20% reduction in energy use compared to homes built to the current code. So the average payback of initial investment in terms of energy savings is around 6.4 years. Oh, I thought it was longer, okay. Commercial buildings built to stretch will save 7% in terms of energy costs. Depending on the building type, payback of initial investment can be between three and 13 years. And, and what is the June date again? What is it? What is it yeah. for? No, it's you said- to be the, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's if you were to, um, if your village were to pass this, um, the stretch code by, I believe it's June 30th of 2022, then you are eligible for a grant from NYSERDA. Which was five thousand dollars, I think. I think so. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. I mean, I watched the video that you uh, sent for the Hastings mayor and yeah. the building yeah. inspector, and they answered a lot of my any questions I had. And I mean, it doesn't sound like it's been a big problem to implement it there. People got on board, and from what you're saying. I, I just, I don't think there's any question but that we should be moving forward with this. Ellen, do you want to take a make a resolution tonight? Is that what you're asking? Um, I, yeah, I, I, I would, I mean, I don't know if, if everybody, if anybody wants to spend more time on this. I mean, I had the benefit of being able to attend right. that webinar. Um, I don't want to catch people off guard, but I, I think that we should either vote on it tonight or be prepared to do it at the next um, meeting. Okay, so I have a question for Lou. What, what do you think the receptivity of the board would be to, uh, to doing this? Do you have any sense? Uh, I like it. <laughs> I mean, when, when we discussed uh, it, Oh, sorry, I, I, I don't, you know, I've been surprised by a lot of things. So I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, uh, try to predict uh, what they'll do. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, I like it. It sounds like something Tom would like. I, I don't know about the others. So um, suppose, suppose you made a resolution instead of resolving that the, the village should do it, we could do a little bit softer and say, we encourage, we, we encourage the village board to seriously consider enacting the stretch code and pointing out to them the, the benefits of doing it by June 30th. That's, and that that's puts the, why puts you're here. The, yes, please. Yeah, I mean, that puts, it, it doesn't say that, that we've looked at it, you know, exhaustively and have a definitive recommendation, but we certainly have looked at it enough mm -hmm. to think it's a good idea that should be, should be strongly considered. You, you, I, I think you could make the, the, the recommendation. I was going to say the same thing about the leaf blower. Uh, tell us you want a law that bans gas leaf blowers or not, or whatever you want. I mean, and, and we'll bring it up and discuss it. And, uh, ultimately, the board will, will decide what to do. Your, 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 your place is to advise the board. So uh, advise, please. That, that's, what, that's, why, that's why I'm, I'm listening. That's why you're here. So tell us what you want. And so suppose I, I, would, I would propose that the, that the uh, committee 
um, pass a resolution encouraging the village board seriously to consider uh, enacting the New York State Energy, <laughs> energy Code. And if they're so inclined to attempt to do so by June 30th, because of the financial benefits of doing it before that date versus after. I mean, I would say we should recommend it. It sounds a little too wishy-washy and we're like, we're, it's like, it sounds like a suggestion what you're saying as well, opposed I'm just, to like- I'm just wondering if we need to, if we should be giving them the courtesy of making a presentation at the board okay. meetings to really what yeah. this is. I mean, I, if I was a trustee and I got presented with that, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what this is. So I, I think- Well, I mean, yeah, that would they, obviously, that would I've be part it. of the deal. And we would probably get the people from NYSERDA, who the woman who came and spoke to us, there are, they yeah. have people who will come and speak to the board. Uh, I was gonna say earlier that when we discussed it at the CSC meeting, uh, Jerry didn't seem at all sort of opposed to it, right? No. And I think we could have um, like Dennis easily reach out to the building department in Hastings. And, you know, there's a little bit of uh, background work we can obviously do before the board considers it. But I think we have to get a move on. Well, give me, right. give me something in writing. I'll bring it to a work session. It has to go to the work session before it gets on the main agenda. And then the presentation would happen at the, at, on the main agenda. Okay, so when's the work sessions? Uh, there's another one in two weeks. There was, there was, we, just had, we just had one. They're right before the, 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 the board meeting. But, but the thing is, you, you, w w their policy is not to have it go on the same day right to the, uh, right to the yeah. agenda. Um, we forced a couple of things, and, and they, they don't seem to like to do that. So it would be... In two weeks, I put it on on the work session, and then we'd schedule the um, uh, the uh, public hearing or the presentation the pr presentation two weeks after that. Okay, All right. Okay. So, what do you want for the work order? Just this resolution from the committee and yeah, the resolution. Yeah, sure. A, a resolution. Just just let me know what you want, and I'll uh, and I'll tell them, and I'll and, and 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 if I say so, it goes on the work agenda. That's that's it. Okay. So, so Debbie, is our note taker? Do you have do you have down what what we're what we're going to do? Well, have we decided how what the wording is yet? Yeah, we're suggesting I don't, I don't or wording. Yes. or asking. I think the two questions are whether we say that we encourage the board to seriously consider enacting yeah. it, or whether we say we recommend that which is, I mean, there's a, there's a nuance there that's important. I think we should be recommending it. I, I really yeah, we're, we're all on, I think we're all on board. No? Yeah, recommend it. I would say okay, then, the, then we'll recommend it. Okay. As the environmental so why don't we take a vote? Why don't we just take, well, guys? Kate had something to say. She's let's good, take so. a vote. Who is in favor of recommending it? I am. That's everybody. Okay. <laughs> Ellen, you were frozen. <laughs> now you're not. You're frozen still. You were frozen. I don't know what's going on. And and we can add to the resolution that we will work with if if it's Lou, if you think it's helpful, and it just takes Ellen into your uh, consideration. Your suggestion is that we offer to work with the board to you know make a presentation. Um, an educational presentation to them to explain to them what the the stretch code is and 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 what the benefits are. I don't, you know, um, David. I don't think uh, it's foreign to them. I've heard it mentioned. Um, uh, it, this would be, you know, putting a little urgency on it. Uh, you know, uh, uh, five grand isn't a lot, but it's not nothing. And uh, you know, um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, I think what we would probably best to do is actually have the representative from NYSERDA. They have people who can answer the questions that will come up. Right. And, 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 you know, I bet they'd be delighted if, if, yeah, if yeah. we're seriously, as a community, can seriously considering doing this, this is something that NYSERDA is trying to encourage people to do. 
I yeah. don't. Oh, definitely, now that we, we could get somebody to to make a presentation if we asked. They would get someone to make a presentation. Yes. You're talking about a, a, a month from yesterday, and or oh, four weeks from yesterday, and uh, and I, and I'll bring it up at the work session uh, in two weeks. Okay, so you would like me to organize someone for the board meeting on the 14th of April? Yes, if that's, if that's I don't have the calendar in front yeah, of me. Okay, yes. Then. Okay. Okay. Do we need to give you something by way of a, a written resolution or, or do you have it? You have, do you have what you need already? I, I think I got it. Uh, you know, I, I, if you trust me to write it, I'll write it. I'll tell them this is what they want. And the, uh, uh, and that you guys were unanimously asked us to, uh, to adopt the, uh, uh, the stretch code, um, quickly to get this, uh, to, to, to get this, uh, the, this grant and, uh, the, we, NYSERDA can, can present something in two weeks and they may, you know, they may have a, a reasons already why they, they, they want to, or don't want to do it, but, uh, um, we'll find out. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Okay, thank Good. you. Lou. Cool. Great. Okay. Um, that's great. Let's just keep moving along as we're running short on time here. So Lou, this was sort of how you started the meeting, I think. Oh no, I'm sorry, this isn't. Um, so Jeff Ahn, who runs the Parks Department has been really um, enthusiastic about um, electric maintenance equipment. He attended a, um, I guess an expo at the Meadowlands a few weeks ago with his crew and they liked what they saw. There was a demo today at the Harbor with some, also some people from the town. So I think that that's moving forward um, or a $5,000 grant or whatever was left over from the light bulbs will be um, put to good use to make um, a purchase of electric equipment. I think what I heard today is the first purchase may be an electric mower, um, but I'm really um, happy because there's really a lot of attention on that with the parks department. So that's really great news. Um, we talked about access green zones. I don't think we have time to get into this so much tonight now, um, but uh, I think especially once we get electric equipment, it will be really great to have a zone in the village like Large Fund does at Kane Park. We talked about Gillies Park in Orienta or maybe there's some other discrete park where that park will only be, um, you know, maintained with electric equipment and it's good for, you know, demonstrations and, and sort of just being, um, you know, there could be signage and there's fanfare around it. And I think, again, it's just sort of, sort of proselytizing the message of, of going electric. Um, so Lou, this is sort of where you started about the village rooftop solar insta installation. Yeah, this, this is, is this, yeah, we, we're talking about it. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Right, so we, we have been talking about this and I know that we really um, would love for the village to have, you know, solar rooftops, right? It's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. So we had asked, um, this was at our last CSC meeting, whether there are any rooftops in the village that would be suitable for solar, A, for the use of that one building, or B, for com a community solar project. So I will now turn it over to you because I know you had a conversation with Jerry about that. Me? Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, um, you, yeah. What, 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 we, um, what we discussed is um, uh, a, a solar, a full solar array. And uh, I'll tell you this, the, the, the interesting thing is they have pollinator solar array combos wow oh, where mm -hmm. you where you where you you uh, I, 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 they they you, you have the, the the solar panels and you plant the uh, the pollinator um uh between and uh, and underneath them and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it works pretty well and and i think that that could be something uh, we could look at we just started looking at it i'm gonna i'm gonna go up and, and tom is gonna go up we're gonna go look at this uh, this thing in clarkstown but um it would be it would be real nice if the grid goes down someday and all our lights don't go out. That would be nice. So that that's... sounds amazing. I would if you want to host a field trip, I'd be happy to go as well. Okay. That sounds really really cool. I mean, it, it, it's it, it's remarkable. They have a uh, they had a large uh, landfill in in Clarkstown, uh, and you, you can't do anything with them. There, 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 there's you know you you have to it, the DEC's got to be involved in it. So it's it's very limited what you can do with them. You can't, uh, you know, and you don't want kids playing on them because, you know, it's got methane and stuff. And 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 right now the thing has got pipes coming out of it, and you know, so so something with uh, 
and it's got a, you know, an ugly fence. It's a possibility. I don't know that it, that it would work, but it would, you know, we, we could be selling electricity to Con Ed, you know? So, so is this, is this an envision? I know you started out saying Taylor Lane. Is this envisioned I, of something that would be on the ground or is it on a rooftop somewhere? Uh, we both, both, you, you, you do both. I mean, but uh, uh, you need, you, you see in that, you need a lot of space to generate any, any sizable amount of electricity. You can't, I mean, uh, a rooftop is gonna give you a little bit. If you're gonna generate, uh, you know, several kilowatts of electricity, you've got, you need, uh, you need acres. Hmm. Well, I know that the Homics ice rink, I think that serves 100 homes, if I have my numbers correct. Yeah. Um, so, I didn't know if there was any even privately owned, let's say warehouses in the commercial district that would want to lease their, you know, make some money off of their own roof to do mm -hmm. um, a community solar project. But yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, I'm great that there's interest in it. And um, this, this, this is very early. This is me. This is yeah. me talking to Jerry. And 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 Tom and, and a couple other people. We haven't we haven't done anything uh, on it yet. I want to schedule a, a discussion on it. Um, but uh, I thought I would bring it, mention it to you guys since this is this is what you do. If you have any thoughts on it, that's mm -hmm. all. You know, it's, it's probably great. years away. You know, well, it's got to so, start somewhere. Uh, so uh, just to, I don't think it's going to provide a lot of electricity. But maybe if we go to more than one, like if Taylor's Lane's work, Taylor's Lane works and you can put it on the cap and all that, that's great. I mean, we talked about possibly over the roof deck of the parking lot across from the police station. And I was driving in White Plains. And I mean, it's a much bigger parking lot, but they did that on top of one of their parking lots, if not multiple. I was down at the rec, uh, the parks and rec building, which really is there's no trees there's nothing really around there and it's at the beach so you know it is a metal roof so i don't know if it's possible and then if we do the uh, police station renovation you know we might be able to do it there yeah, so you know it, it, we might be able to do more than one one location and, and ellen i'm not sure for cs csc uh certification if if it has to generate a certain amount of kilowatts megawatts or is it just has to be a community solar project? Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. I know that, and, and I don't, you know, I don't know how big the one in Clarkstown is. I just know that uh -huh. uh, that that uh, that uh, George Holman, who's the supervisor up there, says he 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 plans to take uh, their town operations, and that's a town of ninety thousand people. It's a, it's a it's a it's got a number of hamlets. He plans to take all their town operations off the grid by twenty twenty five. So. Yeah, that's amazing to me. It's amazing. So uh, uh, that's uh, you know. And listen, you know, we gotta we gotta get ready for this. Things are gonna happen that we're not expecting. Lights yeah. are gonna go out. Uh, the, you know. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. How big is the one in in Clarkstown? I don't know. Uh, oh. I, I could. I could uh, it's however big the, it's however big their landfill was. <laughs> so so <laughs> that's, that's that. Mm -hmm. You know, and and you can't you can't do anything with it. I mean. Uh, uh, I don't know what they, I don't know if they have any, I mean, uh, David, you know, if they have any plans for, you know, what, you know, are you familiar with Taylor Lane? I'm familiar with Taylor Lane. Yeah. What, what, uh, how, how long has it been like that? Forever. Forever. Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah, it, but I, I actually think that I, mean, I, I haven't been privy to a lot of the discussions. Uh, and I know that there, there have been discussions about what the future is. And one of the agenda items for our committee this year is to try to make progress on trying to figure out the future. I, I just foresee some some controversy about putting solar on on Taylor's Lane. Believe me, I would expect it. <laughs> I would expect it. But, um, uh, you know, what do you do with it? I mean, I, I first thought uh, that would be a great pollinator spot. And um, uh, but, uh, but then you can see that you could, it could be, it could be multiple things. I'm not sure you can, you can, you know, have people walking around on it. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what you can do with it. As, as an environmental lawyer, I guarantee you, you can have people walking around on it safely. Okay. okay. You, so, you may uh, not be able to do much more than that, but you certainly can have yeah. planning and you certainly can have people walking, using it for passive recreation. I don't think there's a health issue at all. And it could, it could be, you know, whatever. You know, it's very early. I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. It's not my job to, 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 you know, to 
um, deliberate with you, but I wanted you you guys to think about it and uh, uh, and and bring us whatever whatever it is you have in, right. might have in mind in that direction. I just that, sent an email. I found the clerk's yeah. information. I just sent it to everyone. Oh, well, great, great. What does it say? Uh, Thirteen acres. There you go. Someone read it. Okay. So that yeah, the Taylor Lane is like look if it's if it's one and a half, it's a lot, right? It's not a lot. It's not very I big. It's seven. No, I heard oh, it's than, it's 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 more than one and a half acres. I guarantee. Okay. Isn't, it, isn't it seven acres? That's what yeah. I thought somebody said. Yeah. So that's, that's and, how many, and how many kilowatts does uh, does Clarkstown generate? You say? Mm, it um, does. Uh, Two point three six megawatts. Oh. All right. Two hundred and six. Wait, I don't know what I'm reading. <laughs> mega, mega killer. Well, the first mega. issue with Taylor's Lane is: Are you allowed to build something on it like a solar panel? Because obviously, there's the membrane underneath. So this may be a. It, it's preliminary. I I just wanted you guys to yeah. think about it. I didn't. I shouldn't yeah. have. I it, 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 you know. It, it's in just because it's in my brain and comes out of my mouth doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's wisdom. So yeah. there you go. I mean, if it, if it can you're be you're right, you're right about about the issue with with support because I've seen that at other sites where there's an issue of having to to put support down that, that pierces the membrane and and DEC doesn't like that at all. No, no. <laughs> and 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 George Holman said it was a it was. A long slog to get it done, but he uh, he he pushed really hard. Uh, so uh, uh, you know they got uh, they got all electric cars up there and everything. It's they're amazing. He's got his building inspector driving one of those new uh, electric Mustangs. Cool. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, wow. That's got a lot. I of mean, it, if, yeah. Taylor, yeah. if Taylor's Lane <laughs> could be built on it, I could be built on. I don't think we should abandon the idea just because of community pushback going to get community pushback of course so. yeah and i mean if, if I, you know what's like the smallest space that you can use for solar to make it worthwhile do we know that i mean you can you, you can just you i don't know i mean uh, uh if you want to generate extra uh, electricity and, and 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 store it you want as much as possible well there should be a minimum for community solar. I just can't. I know there is. Right. I just can't. Yeah. It's not on the top of my head. Well, that's something we could find. Out. Anyway, I don't. I didn't. I, I don't. Didn't mean to deliberate with you. That's really not my my okay. function as as a liaison. But I wanted to just. Uh, uh, and I asked uh, uh, the folks over at Village Hall if if it would be okay to bring it up, and they said they didn't see any reason. You think about it. That's this is what you do, and 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 let us know. Um, well, uh, we'll, we'll be pursuing it on our own. So, okay. Uh, I mean, you know, our, our, we also want to just be helpful with whatever, you know, you're trying to do in that area. It is a focus of ours to get the village to put, you know, rooftop solar wherever and, you know, wherever is possible. So, um, yeah. So you have our full support in, in any way because that's the goal of ours. That's, that's terrific, Ellen. Thank you. And, and talking about, Clarkstown, I'm just going to lead into the next point where at, at our CSC meeting, Jerry talked about getting a village fleet inventory done, which he did send to me today. And I haven't really had a time to study it. Um, I don't think it has all the information that's needed to submit um, because these are one of the actions from the, um, it's a CSC action that we can actually get points for, but I don't think it has all the information, but it was interesting to see our fleet and I'll send that around. Um, I was surprised how many <laughs> how many vehicles are in the fleet for the village. Um, there's a few Priuses, but I think by and large it's not electric. And I think that we really need to have a, a big focus when any car, um, I don't know if these are leased vehicles or own, but whenever we start replacing cars, they just have to be electric. Um, so I don't know if at some point we want to even do a resolution to that point. Um, because I feel I I personally feel very strongly about that. There's a there's a lot of vehicles in our village fleet, more than anybody would have expected. We just, and, bought, uh, we just bought a couple of, uh, of uh, you know, internal combustion vehicles. So, I mean, if that's how you feel, please let us know. And, okay. uh, and, and, and you, 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 you have me on your side and, and, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll push for it. Okay. 
So Ellen, do you have, did you say you got an inventory from Jerry? I got that today. I haven't really yeah. had a chance to study it. Um, and as I said, I don't think it has all the um, pieces of information that we need to submit to NYSERDA to get credit for it, but I can certainly send it around just to people to look at it. Yeah, why, why don't you do that? That'd be great. Sure, absolutely, I will do that. Um, so just moving along here, one second, I just lost my agenda, one second. Here we go. Food scraps. Um, so I want to just talk about food scraps. Um, last Wednesday was the first day, as most people know. And Liam and I um, went along for the ride. I went, I did the easy part of it. I did the first two, I think two and a half hours in Orienta. That's where they started. And then I passed it off to Liam. Um, the weather was horrible. <laughs> it like started snowing, it was wet. Um, so basically Robert who works at the DPW in the yard who I think most people at this point know, it was Robert and this other Rob Welsh who were, um, who were doing the route and they were using a flatbed pickup truck with basically the toters that you see at the yard sort of bungee corded somehow into the flatbed part of the pickup truck. So it looked a little makeshift, <laughs> but, but it worked. And it was, I mean, these two guys were really enthusiastic and were really amazing um, because it's from what I saw so far in Orienta, it's a lot of the route is a lot like one house on this street, one house on that street, you know, just, it's a lot of moving around and having to go to almost every street. Um, there were initially 208 signups. I know that number um, grew um, as of say it's 222. Um, so we are, you know, getting adoption of this program. I think it was a little tough for them to finish the route last week. I think they had actually had to finish the following day. Um, and the one modification to the program is that they were doing front door pickup and now it's gonna be curbside pickup because it really didn't make sense. I mean, people had their, you know, other recyclables out, they had their paper and plastics in those other bins, but then they had to get out and go to somebody's front door and some houses are sort of set back mm. and then bring the, bring the bin to the truck to empty it out and then bring it back. And that just takes time. Mm. And yeah, that so was definitely an issue, I think. It, 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 was, it was getting very slow. So they're now moving it to curbside, although not in the curb, a little far, if back from the curb. It's, it's a little, in my opinion, um, overcomplicating things. It really should just be wherever you have your other recyclables, put out the bin. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. whatever. So we'll see how, you know, tomorrow's day two, hopefully some of those kinks will have gotten ironed out. Um, and Robert... And that, I'm sorry, Lee, I'll, I'll turn it over to you in a second. I just want to say two more things. I, I personally think that um, I really hope they're keeping track of the tonnage, the data. I think that's really important with the new program to see, you know, what we're getting versus if we didn't have this. And I really hope that's being tracked. And the other thing I'll just mention is what, one of the things I feel really good about is just the ripple effect that our program is going to have because I see already, you know, the town, the village, I've had so much outreach from Larchmont and the town. Um, how do we do this? What do we need to do? I mean, they really want to have programs like this as well. And I think that um, that's one thing that I think that we should all feel really proud about that we um, were sort of at the forefront of this in the county. And I do think that we'll see this happen in, in other towns within the year. So Alan, I'm, I'm surprised that, that we don't know for sure that they're keeping track of the tonnage. Wouldn't that be? So I, had asked, I had asked for that to happen. And what I was told is that they probably wouldn't be able to keep track of the tonnage, which is what we've been doing since the inception of the program. As you know, we get those charts every month, but that it would be probably more based on, um, I forget the metric. I th I, Jerry gave me a metric and, I, and I'm and I'm forgetting what it is. It was basically keeping track of it, but in a different way. He was also going to keep, obviously, be keeping track of the number of households, which which is an important metric as well. Um, I just I don't really know what happened, Liam. I don't know if you stayed to the end. I don't know what happened when they took those bins off the truck. If anybody waited, I I don't know. I, I really don't know what happened. Well, I think they'd be measuring the volume of the bins. That would be yeah, maybe that's what it is. it. And I think why, why, if they were measuring tonnage before, why can't they measure it now? I don't get that. Yeah. 
can you can we find out can we put a little pressure on them to yeah, so that we can compare apples to apples as opposed to having a totally new metric yeah yeah i don't i don't disagree with you so i was just going to say though there, there were a few quite a few places houses that forgot to put their bins out mm. um so hopefully that will pick up uh, I noticed that Robert just sent an email now. Um, there are also quite a few places that didn't have a green bin. They had their own sort of bucket or pail or something like that. But they, you know, they didn't seem at all. The, Rob, the two Roberts didn't seem uh, at all worried about that. <laughs> um, and then uh, a friend just asked me where she can get some more bags, compostable bags. I get so, mine on um, either at Amazon or at Whole Foods. Okay. They also sell them at the uh, DPW. DPW. Yeah. They sell them. yeah, so the DPW. Right, okay. So it's the DPW and not the regatta building that you buy them. No, the DPW, the second floor office. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It would improve things if we figured out a way to make those more available to people. Not an easy place to get to. David, you can buy them on Amazon. It's really easy. Okay. I mean, it's just the easiest way to do it. And frankly, I think it's better quality, the ones that I get on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question. This yeah. goes back a little bit to your um, uh, the green day. You have free compost to give, uh, give away. Yeah. Are you going to be giving away composters or what do you mean by that? Free compost giveaway? Oh, it's the actual compost. The so soil. compost itself. Okay. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's the, you know, sort of closing the loop here. Right. So it's, yeah. there'll be a big pile of, of the soil and mm -hmm. people could bring their own receptacles mm -hmm. and bring oh, it home. Okay. Okay. for their gardens for their home gardens because you know uh, like for i'm not participating in this program but that's because i compost in my backyard so i don't need to and that's you know that's good too maybe we can also i you know promote that you know composting on in place as well as part of this some in some fashion well know. yes but just an aside there if you can have two compost bins in your kitchen, okay, mm -hmm. you okay. can do the ones that will go into your home backyard compost and then all the other stuff like chicken bones and, you know, any other organic stuff can be composted. Okay. It's an industrial thing. It takes way more. It takes everything, Kate. It takes everything. everything. Okay. So I do, I do exactly that. I have two compost bins. Okay. So very little goes to the to the village pickup, which yeah. was a question though. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to have enough for them to pick up tomorrow, and I'm not sure what to do about that. Do I just put out my one little tiny eeny bitty bag that I have? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, they're going to come by anyway. They're going to come by anyway, so just put it out. Yeah. And does anybody understand why they were not? happy with putting them with all the rest of the recyclables right at the curb but what were they trying to avoid by having them at the front door something with animals i remember reading about animals my understanding was that they were concerned that if it, if it was like put in the street between parked cars that they wouldn't see the bin when they were coming to pick up i think it was a visibility i think it was a visibility issue okay got it but you're but seeing the, the point is that you're seeing the other recyclables. So if it's all together, you know, it just. Yeah. Well, and I think they um, they realize that looking on the looking <laughs> at random front doors <laughs> and deciding what of random what was the front door and all that <laughs> stuff was just as cumbersome as parked cars. Right. So, okay. which is right, exactly. Good point. Which is why you know they're calling this a pilot. It's it's yeah. just figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we've given them. Lee and, and I have um, been in touch with Jerry on this, and we've given him a lot of sort of 
pointers and tips that we got from Scarsdale, which, you know, to me is sort of the gold standard of this program. And, you know, not everyone, not everything is a day one thing. So, you know, the measurement, and we talked about having a dedicated, you know, email. So if somebody's going on vacation, they could just sort of email and let, let us know, um, mm -hmm. or if they're going to be away for, you know, a, a, a longer while, um, or if they have a question, is this eligible? Like there should be a, a means of communication um, mm -hmm. where maybe we could field questions or people at the DPW, if it's more of a logistical pickup question. So that would be a really good thing to have. So there's definitely things that we know we should have for this program, but they're not all day one things. Or day two things. But one thing's for sure is don't put your green bin with the rest of your recycling at the curb. Have it <laughs> separated. It sounds like that's what this week's message is. Not on the front steps, but not but at the curb. It says right, they want to see like he's asking for it to be ten to fifteen feet back. It's it's a little <laughs> it's a little overcomplicating if you ask me. I think we all know what the what the compost bins look like, but I think that right. again, it's just making sure that it doesn't wind up in the street. I mean, they're small; they could get run over if the wind blows it over. I mean, okay. You know, uh -huh. I I finally signed up, and I'm I did it last week, and I'm doing it this week. So oh, good, good. And good. you were you were right. There's so much less actual trash. Yeah, it's amazing. Um. I will look, I think that we got through most of our agenda. It was a, it was a big one tonight. Although I think they're always big ones. And um, I appreciate everybody's engagement. Kate, I didn't really get to in the verb of maintenance, but I think that if it's we get- There's not a lot grant, to say there. Yeah, and if we get the grant, we're just gonna have a lot to talk about and a lot to do yeah. with that. So fingers, uh, fingers crossed, who's, who's gonna actually get the word? Is it, is it gonna go to Ali or who's gonna find out? I think it goes, it's gonna go to Dan Sarnoff. Oh, Dan Starnoff, okay. Pretty sure it's going to go to him. Well, let's all send some good vibes there. Yeah. Ellen, I have one thing, one quick thing. Okay. If anyone's opposed to just trying to promote, even on Instagram, to do no mow May, like don't mow your lawn in May. Mm -hmm. It's like a thing. And uh, for those that don't know, it's just really for the early pollinators. But um, I did it last year. My husband was confused, but I did find some flowers that grew that I didn't know existed. So, oh yeah, um, it's a thing. I don't think the landscapers would be thrilled, but I'm sure not. <laughs> well, if Just, you pay them and they don't have to mow, they'll be very thrilled. Yeah. That's, that's true. true. That's exactly what I did. Do you have last. something like something that you could? I mean, I'd be happy to put that on Instagram. Um, yeah, I can make a little visual. If yeah, and maybe you can go on our um, our Facebook page too, Ellen you know yeah. you're you're, uh, you're you know getting that facebook and together right is everybody following it yeah sure mm -hmm. yeah. it's not getting as much engagement as i'd like so i need more engagement guys do you have Instagram? i'll make comments i'll make comments on the post that also helps for other people to see it thank you yeah we need to get more engagement with that but i'm, I'm trying um robert just allowed me to be the administrator i think it's been about a month or two so i'm trying to post a little more. What's the name of the page? Um, it's the Village of Mamaroneck Committee for the Environment. Okay. Yeah, so I've probably been posting now about maybe twice a week. Um, so yeah, please follow us. And we're also, um, Lou, are you on Instagram? No, I'm not. Okay, because um, Mandy manages our Instagram. We started that last May and we have about like, I think over 200 followers, Mandy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we've, we've really grown that. Um, um, there was going to be some per, uh, someone who was going to comment from the public that I know, but I don't know if she came. I don't know who oh. can do that. Lou, do you see anybody waiting as a panelist or as a? No. Attendee? Yes, I don't know if she. Okay. If uh, no, out. wait a minute, participants. Uh, I I should have been looking for this. Um, no. I don't see anybody. No. That's okay. She was All right. Gonna die. All right. Well, it's nine o'clock, so I am going to make a motion to end our meeting. Second. <laughs> okay. All good with ending the meeting. Yes. All right. Well, oh, thank yeah. you, everybody. I appreciate everyone's engagement and I wish everyone love the rest of the night.
Nice I'll, to meet I'll, you. I'll get that thing right off to them and, and put it on the agenda for two weeks. Okay. Thank you. That's Thank that's you. awesome. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks for meeting.